Ben Vallis here with First of the Floor. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Alongside me, Wayne Spoonie and Jake Eisenberg. But we've got a very special guest for this one. Joining us to talk all things Celtics box is none other than the 1981 Finals MVP, former Celtic and current radio broadcaster for the Celtics, it's Cedric Maxwell. Welcome, mate. How are you going? Well, just fine, gentlemen. I'm here in Detroit looking out on the city. It's a, a bright day, but it's uh, kind of cold here. Oh, a little cold. Nice and warm here in Australia. I wish I could share some of that, that weather with you up there in Detroit. But uh, look, we're very, very thankful for you taking the time to join us, uh, Max. We really appreciate it. Look, let's just jump straight into it. I think Celtics Bucks last night came down to the wire, unfortunately, after the Celtics were up 21 to begin the fourth quarter. Uh, and the Celtics finally have a successful instance of closing out a game in crunch time. But Max, I'm, I'm curious to hear, how does this game, if at all, change your perception of this Bucks team? Like, do they seem like more or less of a threat to the Celtics in the postseason after this game? Um, no, it doesn't change it. I think they're still a threat. Uh, you know, they did not play with uh, Giannis Dezekumbo did not play their, their big star. But I think you looked at Middleton played extremely well. Porter played extremely well. But if Porter was on the floor with Giannis, he's not going to get the same number of shots. Uh, the Celtics did a great job of playing early. And then uh, the Bucks, what they did, they jumped it up. Uh, they went into a zone, and the Celtics, they they took the Celtics out of their rhythm of uh, scoring and moving the basketball around, and they got to the point where they tried to dribble through a zone. And the toughest thing to do in, do in any uh, play is trying to dribble through a zone because you can pass it faster than the zone can move, but you can't dribble as fast as the zone can adjust. Yeah, yeah. Do you, go, ahead. go ahead, Jake. Yeah, I mean, like, look, I think some Celtics fans think that the Bucks matchup is going to kind of be easier than it will be. Like, the reality is, you know, Giannis, as you said, didn't play, but he is one of the guys in the NBA. Any series with him is just going to be a war. Um, but when it comes down to it, I think they're just going to struggle to contain Jalen and Jason consistently for a series. And... <laughs> I think part of the mentality yesterday is, look, the Celtics are 11 games up in the East. We're six games up on the West. No Giannis takes a bit of the energy out of the game. Tatum was getting whatever he wanted, every possession in the first half. Bobby Portis didn't even guard him on one of those pull-up threes, and Tatum's just shaking his head being like, are you seriously just like going to play in the paint and and not guard me? So he doesn't even take a shot in the third quarter, and then eventually late game, they kind of had to grab hold of the rope and take it over again. I think in a series, if you can't, if you don't have multiple guys to throw at both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, you're just gonna, it's going to be hard to beat this Celtics team. So I, I, I still think that they're, they're a threat, but you know, I'm still taking the Celtics. Um, but yeah. That's, well, that's I, my... think, I, I think you're, you're, you're right. You're spot on with that. Uh, you add into the mix the fact that you, they didn't have Giannis, but at the same time, the Celtics didn't have Drew Holiday. Uh, one of their best defenders. So it kind of, it, it, it masked out at the very end. I think that if there was one thing that bothered me, it was the fact that the Bucks got a lot of second chance opportunities. And if there's a weakness, that's it. The Celtics have to hit the glass better. Um, Brown and Tatum uh, have to do a better job. And then you add in, add in Perzingis in the, at the end of the game, came up with a big rebound to uh, close the doors. Pritchard played well. Another guy you didn't have in the lineup, though, you hit, you would still miss one of your shooters. As well as you shot the basketball, Hauser, who had had 30 points against Washington, hit 10 trays last week, had a twist to ankle and did not play. So the Celtics, I think, have a lot more in reserve than the Bucks do. So at the end of the day, I think the Celtics are the better of the two teams. Uh, teams that are going to bother Celtics are going to be – teams that are going to be physical – and maybe a little bit longer. I like what Cleveland's able to do, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, having long athletic guys uh, guard Brown and Tatum. But to me, it's just too many weapons the Celtics have uh, that if you stop them one area, 
then they kill you on another area. Who knew that Pritchard was going to play the way he did last night? So uh, yeah, you, we can people can nitpick all they want to. The Southern right now are playing better than anybody. Uh, the only problem that you know I have, and all Southern fans have, is one thing: Are you going to win a championship? My broadcast partner Sean Grandy right now talks about this is the greatest offense in the history of the NBA so far. That's great. That'll get you. Uh, that'll get you a, a, a bus token over to Australia, maybe. <laughs> you know, I think at the end of the day, you have to win the championship, and there's pressure on these guys to win. Uh, I talked to Joe Mazzulla, the head coach, and he was saying that. He said, well, I don't want pressure on Tatum. I, it's my job to take it off. I said, that's impossible. I said, yeah. because of social media. Tatum probably has 100 million followers. So all these people following him put that much pressure, more pressure on him. During the 80s when I played, we didn't have that pressure. All you had was a few TV shows, and you had your friends and your family. And then we got to the game. But now you have millions of people before the game. Uh, who are talking to Jason Tatum and interacting with Jason Tatum because of the uh, social media. Yeah, and you mentioned Pritchard there, um, and he was, like, electric. The crowd was going crazy mm-hmm. every time Pritchard did any anything last where night. Are you at, where are you at right now, West Virginia? Where at? Morgantown, West Virginia, yeah. where WBU is. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. yeah, I went there. I was actually in hunting. Is it hunting? Huntington? Huntington, yeah, yeah. Yeah, West Virginia. I got I got stuck there one afternoon. I, I came to do a I'm sorry. Well, no, yeah, no. I came to do a promo and I got there and the promo was like at twelve noon. And I said, Well, I'm gonna catch the next plane out at two o'clock. I get to the airport, the lady said, We well, got no more flights to leave. We're closed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to West Virginia. I said, hey, it was two o'clock maybe on a Saturday. <laughs> No, we ain't got nothing till tomorrow. So I, I got stuck in, in, I got stuck there. So I, I just, and then I've driven through West Virginia quite a few times. A beautiful place, but man, give me something to do, okay? Other than eat barbecue. <laughs> yeah, I promise, Morgantown, there's actually a few things to do. We, we got the college here, you know, Joe Missoula's alma mater. So, it's Missoula country. Uh, rough basketball season for us this year, though. Very rough. Yeah, but, uh, yeah yes, it does. Um, uh, you mentioned Pritchard there, electric performance. Is this like one of the best games or the best game you can remember of Pritchard's career? And like, how much of a role do you see him playing in the playoffs? No, he's had better games. He had a couple of triple doubles. Uh, he played against, I want to say, Portland a couple of years ago. It was a late season game, so kind of a throwaway game. I think he had 35, had something crazy number of points. Uh, he's only getting better. Uh, the things the Celtics have done is they have solidified Pritchard got his back. He got uh, four years at $7 million a piece, whatever that was. You know, a nice number for the for us real humans. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, he, he got his bag, and you have everybody else locked up. This is a, a great situation. What people be, should be talking about right now is Brad. Uh, what Brad what Brad has done, uh, Brad Stevens has done a magnificent job of getting these players together. Whereas Danny Ainge, my good buddy, he would hoard all these draft picks and keep them like little pieces of candy under your bed. Not Brad Stevens. He'd give them, you want to, Brad Stevens like Oprah. You want the first round pick? You want one? You, <laughs> you take one. You, you, you. Take one. you take one. So I think it's a, a different site. But uh, getting back to Pritchard, he has played extremely well. Uh, I talked to Brown and to Tatum about Pritchard before, and they said, Pritchard will come to them after practice and he'll say, let's play one-on-one. Nobody else will walk up to these guys and do that. <laughs> he is just that kind of pit bull, that that gym rat that you see running around saying, I want to play every and anybody. And he only seems to be getting better and he's getting more and more confident. And that's a real good thing for the Seeds. Pritchard, I mean, Patrick Beverly has made a career on being kind of like that guy, right? And, and Patrick Beverly hits Cornette I know what you think about the new age celebrations when someone, you know, hits a layup over someone, they give him the too small. Um, Pritchard took that personally. And I mean, he, Pritchard, I mean, definition of a dog, like you talk about Jim Rat, like this guy is absolutely committed to getting better and better and better every year. And like, 
he he put his money where his mouth is. Like he really wanted to play last year. He kind of wanted to get out and find mm-hmm. a role for himself because he believed in himself. I think that's fair. And he's like he's been incredible all season long. Like not just the not just the shooting, but like he he. he one of my favorite stats is um, of all players six four and under. He's third in the NBA in offensive rebounding percentage. It's him, Caruso, and Gary Payton Jr. Payton Pritchard's right there. Like he he got that offensive rebound over Brook Lopez last night. Like that's 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 big time, and the crowd and the team loves it when he's making those sorts of plays. You talked about um about Brad and like this this Celtics bench has the best net rating in the NBA. Horford, mm-hmm. Hauser, mm-hmm. Pritchard, uh, Cornet, and Tillman. They're all locked up, f- including next year, mm-hmm. at like twenty two million. He's Brad has locked up this bench for around twenty two million, and it's like the best bench in the league. That's incredible work. You talked about Brad. Did you see him being like he was an incredible coach? Mm-hmm. Did you mm-hmm. see him being like he's like objectively, if not the best, one of the best GMs? He hasn't he hasn't made a bad move yet. Well, he's done he's done a magnificent job. Uh, you think you go out and get Derek Derek the way yep. Derek White, and you pick him up? Uh, you able to somehow go out and get Drew Holiday? Uh, you said you you've already locked up. Uh, um, Brown, you have Tatum who is waiting to be locked up. You pick uh, Porzingis up, and I talked to Porzingis about it. He got on the bus. He was he's been all smiles. I said, "Dude, oh, yeah. I'm so happy." He said, "I was so happy that Brad Stevens decided to pull the trigger." And and Porzingis has made a uh, uh, he's a big difference maker. Uh, he's a seven foot five guy who can shoot the ball from the outside. I love what Rob Williams gave you last year. Uh, he was he was very very good. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon very good. One of my my favorite players of all time would have been Marcus Smart. But in making this deal to get uh, to make sure you were able to get that big center on the inside and Porzingis, he has um, really changed the culture uh, in the fact that he solidifies everything. Uh, he makes it easier for Brown and Tatum because if you slough off on those guys as a big. Porzingis is waiting out there at the three-point line, ready to launch. Whereas that didn't happen with, say, when you played Miami, Bam Alabado really was just kind of resting. He would, you know, take day take days off, essentially, uh, guarding, uh, you know, Williams at that time. But you can't do that against Porzingis because he punishes you. He makes them accountable. If you make a switch on any big out there, he goes directly to the paint. And these guys have only gotten better with at getting him the getting him the basketball yep. in the paint, where he can punish the opposition for making a switch. Yeah, Pozinga seemed to struggle a little bit last night against the Bucks. Max, do you think there's any particular reason for that? Is he just still reconditioning, coming back from the, having some time off with a hamstring, or was it something strategically that the Bucks did to slow him down? I, I think he missed some shots that normally he made. Uh, but you think one of the biggest plays of the game happened to be when mm-hmm. Porzingis was able to get that rebound, the offensive yeah. rebound. And it wasn't like one of those tip rebounds. I mean, that dude went and snatched it, you know, yeah. way above the rim and then hammered it down. And it was it was just devastating to the Bucks who had gotten so close uh, to see Porzingis do that. So I, I, I still look at him as still there. there's so much, uh, you know, when I, I looked at this team, and I talked to Joe Mazzulla before, and Joe Mazzulla said, and this, he said, I think this team can only get better offensively. And that was a couple of months ago. They have. They, they've gotten better because they moved the ball a lot more. Tatum is, uh, believes that, you know, I don't have to score in the first five minutes of a game to be effective. And Brown normally takes that position. Michael Jordan was the best that at ever doing that to me. When I see Michael give the ball to Scotty, give the ball to somebody else, get those guys involved early. And then the defense couldn't stay entrenched with him. And then he had a true one-on-one. Tatum seems to have gotten the memo to do the same thing of making everybody else knock down shots. And then when he gets a chance to be by himself, because you can't double team anymore, he's in a true isolated one-on-one position. Now, I just want to stick with the bigs very quickly before we... And it's interesting what you what you just said. I really want to dive into that in a second. But just sticking with this Bucks game very quickly, we did see a lot more Xavier Tillman mm. last night mm. than Luke Cornett. 
What do you think that says about the playoff picture for the bigs off the bench rotation for the Celtics? It seemed like the matchup was which was much more suitable to Xavier Tillman last night, but we have been seeing a heavy dose of Luke Cornett recently. What I, do you think that rotation is uh, going to look like in the postseason? I'm a huge fan of Cornett, a huge fan. And, and what I call him is a condor. Uh, because <laughs> he's always coming in from the side. And he never does anything that, you know, you would think like, hey, that's different for a guy seven foot tall. He stayed, he he stays in his lane. You and all of us have been out in the highway and we're going, damn, I wish that guy would stay in his lane. I wish that guy was <laughs> I wish he'd stay in her lane. Well, he stays in his lane. We have he has the ability to knock down the three from the outside, but I don't think he's taken one this year. He is inside in the paint playing defense. He'll get tip ins, he'll he'll run the floor, he plays his role. So you have a couple of combinations. I know you're going to play him a little bit more, maybe a lot more. I'd like to see him a lot more. But I'd also like to see um, um, maybe Porzet. I would like to see him a little bit more um, just, uh, you know, in a, a defense rotation. So the thing is, Brad, Brad and, you know, Joe Mazzula, they have a lot of cards to play. And uh, I talked to Joe Mazzula the other day. He was walking around the court uh, at the garden before the game, and he has his – uh, rosary uh, beads that he, he has, has in his hand. And he walks around and uh, before the game, and I was the only one in there. And he stops in front of me and says, Max, which which one of those banners are yours? I said, uh, 1981 and 1984. I said, and you were the Finals MVP in 1981. And he said, you know, I would do anything, anything to bring another banner. And literally, he had tears in his eyes, man. I said, you're wow. going to get there, big fella. You're going to get there. What it is, is the pressure of this year. If the Celtics can withstand the pressure and get through, this team could win the way they're constituted now. They can win two or three championships with this particular team because they're young, they're athletic, they're hungry, they're well coached. But it's getting through this year because everybody has already picked them right now, including you three gentlemen. Pick them right now as a favorite. You know it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know who is responsible for Cornette not taking any threes anymore? Because when he was with the Knicks, he used to fire him up. And then the longer he's been on the Celtics, the less and less he's taken him until set. now he just doesn't. Oh, really? No, I don't think that the coaches are saying, Luke, don't take one. But he has found a role. If you're a good player in this league, do what you do and do it well. I mean, it's just like having a – and this could be a sexist. But if you have a great wife and she makes pancakes – Damn it, don't go out making something else. Make pancakes. <laughs> do well, girl. Just like a, a gentleman. You do what you do well. Don't flip away and, hey, I think I want – you get on the grill and you're a hot dog, man. You make hot dogs. You don't yeah. have to make ribs over there. You know, you're in Australia right now. You might eat some alligator. You know, in, 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 in West Virginia, West Virginia, I know you ain't have no alligator. You might have squirrel. squirrel or yeah. Possum, <laughs> or, you know, one of those – one of those tasty treats that they like, or you know, the latest roadkill that might come by. You, you, mm. that's, mm, that's good. So do it. Too. <laughs> he has done what he's done. He stays in his lane. I like that because he knows what's going to keep him on the floor. It's not going to be his ability to knock down the three. It's going to his his ability to clog up the lane, play defense, and make those other guys look good. Amazing. So much to unpack there. Perfect analogy as well, Max. Uh, we are going to zoom out a little bit and just talk about the championship hopes and the sort of the upcoming playoff run for this team. But first, we've just got to get to a quick word from our sponsor. The NBA playoffs are coming and the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's these sad little teams that haven't locked up the number one seed and are fighting for seeding or tournament season, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay live even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. Porzingis is sitting on a back-to-back. -back. You know we're going for more on Horford points, rebounds, and assists. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. 
All right, Max, you've been covering the Celtics for a while as a, as a radio broadcaster. When did you get the sense that this team was something special? Was it as soon as they made the, those roster moves to bring in KP and Drew, or was there like a wait-and-see moment for you where, as you were watching them, something clicked in your mind? Well, I thought this team has been special over the last couple of years. Uh, when Tatum and Brown uh, started to develop that chemistry, um, you know, last year I think that they would have um, did what no other team in the NBA had done if Tatum hadn't twisted his ankle in the first play of the game against Miami, being down 3-0 and coming back and winning a series. Uh, right now, if you look at this team, um, yeah, the changes that you've made defensively. I mean, Porzingis is not Rob Williams in blocking shots, but what he is, he's that big seven-footer at the end that you have to shoot over. He makes you adjust shots. Drew Holiday has been unbelievable. He is uh, akin to a, um, and I, my, my favorite, one of my favorite players is Marcus Smart. I always say Marcus Smart is a, uh, is a pit bull. And, and you know, you, you always have that sign, you know, come in your yard, be, come in my yard, beware of dog. Well, <laughs> Drew Holiday isn't necessarily that, but what he is, he, he's a, that, that dog that you come to somebody's house and you knock on the door and you hear, who, who. <laughs> you're going, oh, hell, the, the, the dog. No sign, no sign at all, but you know there's a damn dog around this someplace. And I think that's what, to me, that's what he seems to be. So, I mean, defensively, I think they're they're better. Uh, uh, Brown and Tatum are better. Uh, their starting five is good. You bring Al Horford has been playing well. Al Horford is just as good. Al Horford mm-hmm. been starting for you, playing great minutes, shooting the ball extremely well rebounding, defending. I mean, this team does not have um, the, the weaknesses. I see the fact that they have to rebound collectively as a unit and stop letting tech teams get second and third shot opportunities. But other than that, you know, shooting the ball, there's not a team in the league that has five guys can be on the floor anytime and knock down the three, the way the Celtics have, uh, um, offensively moving the ball extremely well, uh, two studs, uh, you know, we have Tatum and Brown. Just the, It's elite now on the wings. Wings are what power the NBA now. Uh, during my era, it was, during my era it was always that big man. It was Robert Parrish, Moses Malone, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. All those guys right now, Akeem Olajuwon, those guys would be dinosaurs. They would have to change their game. I still believe they would be great. But they would have to change their game to fit into what people do today. And that's through, shoot the three ball and play a little bit more out on the floor. Patrick Ewan, I'm not sure how many times I saw Patrick Ewan. Every time he dribbles, I thought he was at the International House of Pancakes where he keeps tripping the basketball. <laughs> I'm like, gee, is this guy going to call that? But, I mean, the rules have changed, and I know as much as I like playing, like, you know, teams that play in the paint, the game has changed and gotten away from that. Uh, Jason Tatum told me it was – it must have been about two weeks ago – um, uh, he said to me, yo, man, uh, I found out that was a, um, um, an old stat sheet that was, that was out there, um, 30 years ago, uh, Celtics, we, I was on the team. We played against, uh, the Houston Rockets. We attempted to win three for the entire game. I made that. That was the only three I made for yeah. my career. I was one for 13. <laughs> Yeah. One for 19. We checked yeah. today. Yeah, one for 19. <laughs> thank, thank you. Fact checking. Always. <laughs> but I did make one. I'm like, okay. And what, um, here's what we need to do. He said, and Tatum came out. And he's like, so somebody had told him, they said, well, wait a minute, man. Let me make sure I get this straight. You only attempted one three pointer for your entire career, for that entire game? I said, yeah. That's how the game was played at that time. It was, uh, there was a different pace game. So, but un, but now that's never going to change. That's we're never going to go back to those days of uh, uh, the NBA and and not shooting threes anymore. That's just not going to happen. Yeah, can, can you imagine Hakeem with a three point shot? Holy oh, shit! Man. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Insane. 
Um, so the C's have, we've not won a title in the Tatum Brown mm-hmm. era, but mm-hmm. they've won, I think the most playoff games since Tatum came into the NBA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and look, they are the culture, especially with smart mm-hmm. off the team now. So how do you view those guys as culture leaders, as culture setters? Uh, in what way are you talking about culture? Explain that to me. Break it down a little yeah. bit for me. Yeah, sure. Just mainly as like how they, the chemistry on the floor, what they're doing as leaders to essentially set the tone for how the team plays on both ends, mm-hmm. night in and night mm-hmm. out, if that makes sense. Um, I think that this team, night in and night out, really looks at them and they're saying that these guys are our leaders. And I think Brown has grown into it. Tatum has grown. Tatum wasn't as vocal. Now more vocal. You know what I love to have? I love a mean Jason Tatum. I'd like to get one of those. I, let me go to, I always go to my, uh, see, here's like, I watch too many nature shows. What I need, <laughs> one of those, I need one of those salties over there in Australia. Oh, one yeah. of the mean salties they have, the you know, those alligators out there. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah. Those salt water alligator, mean as, mean as whatever. I want to put a little bit of that into Tatum. I want him to be much more nastier and meaner out there. And the, the the better he is with that, the better off this team is going to be. Yeah, I think like they've definitely grown as leaders. Mm. And I think you can just see it like with, with this team. You bring in Porzingis, you bring in Drew Holiday. Every year, the roster has actually changed quite a lot throughout their careers. And guys have like left the Celtics, gotten big contracts. Like when guys come to the Celtics and they play with Tatum and Brown, they play really well. And they have really good seasons and they end up either staying and wanting to stay or they, they end up leaving and getting paid. Like I saw a video of Jeff T the other day talking about one of his favorite seasons of his career was uh, the year that he played half a season with Tatum and, and Brown. It was that post COVID season, all the, like the crowds went in the, in the stands and stuff. But he's like, those guys are just like fun guys. They, they take their work seriously. They, they, they empower their teammates to be successful. And I think that's something like, I think, you know, Tatum, I we'd all like him to be a little more demonstrative, a little more like what you're talking about. It feels like Jalen's really taken that. Because like when, when Marcus left, that's something that we were a little bit worried about was like he's mm-hmm. kind of been the emotional leader, the heart mm-hmm. and soul, the guy mm-hmm. that we love and trust. But Jalen, I think, has really taken that like, you know, with Duncan Robinson, he, you know, they got into a little fight. Like he's taken, he's taken, you know, the responsibility of guarding the best guy night in, night out. He's let dunking me, on the, everybody. Let, let, me, a chance. Let, let, yeah, let me, let me, let me stop you right there because, you know, <laughs> and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a West Virginia analogy. Okay. I'm going to go okay, back great. and forth. Uh oh. Neither one, neither one, that, that fight they were about to have, neither one of those guys could break win. That wasn't even a good fight. <laughs> That's how I felt about that. They weren't, them dudes ain't going to fight no more. But I did like the fact that Brown turned around and challenged him. I did like that. The more I get from those two guys, that's the examples. Is when, you're, when your best player is like that, you tell me an NBA team in the last, who's won the last couple of championships that hadn't had that SOB over there on his side. I mean, you could think about, you could say Draymond, SOB. You can look at, you can think about uh, Jokic, you know, you know, especially when Mars, uh, one of the Mars yeah. brothers hit him in the back. I mean, he went, he went full uh, uh, combat on him. And, and well, Serbian. Him yeah. So I mean, those are, I'm looking for, for that from this particular team that there, there has to be a nasty Tatum moment, which is going to galvanize the rest of the guys out there on the floor. Yeah, and I think that when we get to the play, he, he's definitely more of a Tim Duncan than he is a than he is a than he is a Draymond. And I think you know, Tatum, we'll see. I, I would like someone to to push him in that way. Like for whatever reason, when he plays Kevin Durant, he likes to get up for those types of matchups. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, well, uh, moving on a little bit here. So, um. So my, my dad's from Andover, Massachusetts, which is why I'm a Celtics fan. And okay. he's been telling he's been telling me that Derek White, his comparison is Dennis Johnson in the '84. And I was looking, I was going back looking at the numbers and stuff. And like obviously, I, I, so I wasn't around for that. But Game Seven, Lakers Celtics, Celtics win 111, 102. Cedric Maxwell leads the team in scoring with 24. But then Dennis Johnson, second leading scorer. 
tw- 22 points while Larry Bird goes, you know, six for 18, which, you know, that's been kind of the, the story with Derek White is like, on any given night, he can end up being like your second best player or something like that. I don't know if you, what do you Derek, think about that comparison? Derek White, Derek White has been fantastic. Derek White, I had not thought about that comparison, but you know, Derek White is. He, he is DJ Light. And the fact that he defends, he's blocked more. Some stat they gave the other day, he had blocked more shots than Giannis. He blocked yeah. more shots than, than, you know, maybe all these bigs that you look around the league. He's done a tremendous job of uh, his timing has been great. So I, I still think that. And I believe he has a lot more to go. He He's getting more confident. The, the, the guard play is getting more. It, it's just, it's really scary to see these guys right now. I, I just, here's what I believe. I wish they could stop right now playing these regular season games. That's not going to happen, obviously. But, man, I can't wait for them to get to the big task of playing in those mm-hmm. reg- in, in the playoff games just to see how they're going to respond, to see if the pressure is going to be on Tatum, to see if the pressure is going to be on Brown, whoever it is, because they need to pop that bubble I- immediately. But if you look at those guys, and Drew Holiday is already a world champion, so, you know, you add something else to the mix. Uh, Sam Cassell has done a great job of coming over, being an assistant coach, and he's always in Tatum's ear. Uh, people say sometimes Tatum takes too many threes. He told, told Jason, he said, look, man, when your three is not going, see the ball go in the basket. Don't take another three. Attack the rim. Get a couple of free throws. Get a layup. And then the rim becomes a lot bigger instead of continuously chunking it up there to see what you might get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jumping around a bit here, like you mentioned, the Celtics and or championship teams rather needing mm. that like tough sob on their mm. team to have any chance of winning a championship. We definitely lost that to some degree with Marcus Smart, and mm. I don't want to speak for you, Max, but for us as you know fans of the team, mm. pretty devastated when that trade happened because we knew that our heart and soul was was going out the door. Well, and, how do you feel about it now, though? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Is like, no, no, no. Then, but... Let me ask you that. How do you feel about? How do you feel about it now? Oh, I, pretty I good. Hate to say it, Max. But I feel, <laughs> yeah, feel pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> Fifty-five and fourteen. <laughs> well, I love that. Stuff. I love to get to go. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I, I look. I am the biggest Marcus fan, you know, around. I thought he. I thought people dumped on him too much when he took a shot that a lot of times other guys wouldn't take. I really felt it was it was absurd for people to go on him the way they did, but they did. And now Marcus is out of here, but I think you have Drew, and you I think it's a more controlled anger that these guys have, a lot more control. Uh, he was volatile. Uh, Marcus was yeah. Marcus was the, the the Mount St. Helen over here that you know yeah. he, he might go off at any time, but. But if you look at these guys now, I think they're a lot more control, a lot more poise, and you you have to like the their their chances again of what they can do. Absolutely, I mean, like as good as Drew Holiday is defensively, and I think like they're you know as far as quality of defender, mm-hmm. Marcus and Drew are, are, are similar. But I definitely do miss like the way that Marcus just is a defensive playmaker. Like when you just need some kind of crazy thing to happen, yeah. he, he dives into the stands and throws it off somebody. Like we, we don't have quite that. It's not necessarily better or worse, but it's just like there's something special about the way that Marcus Smart plays defense. And it's just a little bit, it's just electrifying. Well, let me ask you this. And why did he piss so many people off that didn't like him? <laughs> well, I mean, as like electric as he yeah. is, and I, I agree with you. And he is that guy. But, the, there were a lot of people in the, in the media. There's a lot of fans who just had had a hair across their ass because of Marcus Smart. Be, oh, he shoots too much. He didn't pass the ball. He did it. it it's just so many guys had done that over. Derek White probably is taking more shots than, than Marcus Smart, but nobody says anything about Derek White shooting. But Derek White is too. But let let me say they're going this. in. Derek, Derek <laughs> White is yeah. the, the better percentage. But we've seen Marcus go on the tear where he can get 10 threes. He, he would, he's been unbelievable. So, but I think you get one or the other. But, again, you can't argue right now with this team or what they're doing. I mean, we can, we can nitpick all you want to. This team is playing better right now than any team in the NBA. And you look at right now, there are 10 games. 10 yeah. games ahead in the Eastern Conference. I, I don't even I, – I can't remember – 
the last time I've seen any team ahead that far in any division. I, I, I can't even remember that. I remember as, as good as, as Golden State was, I don't remember them being 10 games ahead. I don't, I don't remember that. So, yeah, that, that's a whole nother, nother thing which comes out. And the fact that, you know, I, I hate the Los Angeles Lakers, so that's even, Great. <laughs> even better just yeah. to throw a stone over there. <laughs> That's right, Elia. Yeah, you're right. Even in even that year, the Warriors won 73. The the Spurs won 67. And like, yeah, this this version of the NBA, Max. I know you're watching these teams night in night out. You've been, you know, mm-hmm. been been playing with some of the best players of all time. But like, the the talent in the NBA, like to be 10 games up in the East mm-hmm. in today's mm-hmm. NBA, mm-hmm. when the talent across the board is so insane, like. Like you know, there there are there are players on you know ten, eleven seeds. You know, like LeBron and Steph are the ninth and tenth seed. Like that would not have Crazy. been the case even even ten like eight years ago when the Warriors won seventy three games. The talent has just gotten crazy in the last like five ten years. Talent level is tremendous, uh, but if you look at the um, uh, the overall talent of the Celtics, it is a yeah. it is a concentrated. Uh, effort every single night there is not if you are a if you're a defender you have to pay attention to every one of these guys on the floor i mean it's like pritchard came in you had to pay attention to pritchard last night i mean oh. house wasn't even there holiday wasn't even there and you still had to pay attention to all those shooters so i i don't i don't envy anybody who'd have to play the boston celtics the only one can beat the boston celtics now and, and and my brother-in-law say this is is the Boston Celtics the the pressure that they're going to put on themselves they have to be able to eliminate that as their coach Joe Mazzulla says I have to do a better job of taking that pressure away but I don't know how you do it because one thing that Celtics have done they have set the they have set the the bar themselves and you know you you and and when you set the bar yourself that's when the, that's when the craziness is is all about. I, you know, I, I think that's absolutely fair. The expectations are, are sky high, and they have one. They they've got a lot of playoff experience. Obviously, they haven't quite won it, but like they've got as much experience as you can have without actually winning it. As you said, Holiday's won the championship. I mean, Porzingis, he's got the confidence coming out every which way. Like these these European guys, like have been playing in tough environments from such a young age. But I'll ask you. I mean, you you played in in the finals, won a couple of rings. Like, do you? From one from a pressure perspective, but do you have like a favorite moment, a performance? Like, I mean, obviously, you know, your finals MVP that that was a game five where you had 28, 15, three assists, steal, block. Like, I mean, the pressure, you, you, you put the team on your back, you know? Um, you know, I think that when you play with great players, they all can elevate your game. And you have to elevate your game yourself sometimes. Uh, you know, 1984, we were playing the Lakers. Game seven, you had to say I had 24, eight and eight. Yeah, I, I did. But in that room, in in that room, there was only one. Well, two guys. I, I said that two guys who had been Finals MVP, and neither one of them name was Bird. One of them name was Maxwell, and the other guy name was Dennis Johnson. So you had those other guys. We had the ability over there to take over games and play in that way. So I, I don't think that there was any fear at all. And that's that's what has to happen with this team. Has to be no fear. You have to go out and play your game. If you play at your top ability, then you're in the finals. And and I don't even I know Denver would be a hell of a matchup. Denver has beaten you twice so far. But here's the biggest thing if you're a Celtic fan. Denver Nuggets have not seen the Celtics A game yet. They haven't. They played them in Boston. They beat the Celtics. If you can hold Denver to Celtics shot poorly, if you can hold Denver to 102 points Mm -hmm. and you scored 100, when's the last time the Celtics scored 100 points in the game? And (laughs) and then going into Denver, (laughs) yeah, then going into Denver, you think about that game. Tatum had the game on his on his fingertips late in the basketball game, and the Celtics hadn't played well. They came back and had the chance to go ahead in that game. So. if the Celtics play their A game, man, it's, it's again, it's just going to be, and they're healthy, it's going to be hard to beat them. 
So what is that A game then in the case of the, the matchup against the Nuggets? What what haven't they flashed against Denver that you think they will if they do meet up in the in the finals? They haven't shot it well. They have not shot the ball well against Denver. Uh, I mean, their three-point uh, threat has not been as good. Um, they didn't rebound uh, well. It's almost every aspect of their game, they did not play well. And the guy that I would want to see, Luke, a little bit more Luke Cornett going up against uh, maybe Joker. Jokic, because I think he's the, he's a big body guy. He maybe can keep him off the button. Nobody's going to stop a guy like that. Uh, he's 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 the best player right now in the world for for that reason. But I think I'd like to put a little bit more size on him. How many times do we see uh, Jokic just a couple of times just run over Porzingis? Porzingis standing in the lane. He puts a forearm in him and knocks him in the stanchion and the. Uh, yeah. the the referees don't make the calls, so I, I, I just think again, something's going to come with their A game. They're, they'll they'll be fine. Uh, again, it's going to be getting there. Getting there is going to be the key. The first game the Celtics have in the playoffs is going to be the key because that's going to set the tone for who they are. The, the the word that they have to use is the words they have to look at. No fear. The two words, no fear. They have to say no fear. Just go out and play your game. Stay in your lane. Do what you do. Yeah. So on on Jokic, I have heard you're not going to believe this, Max. Mm. But living in West Virginia, I don't have a chance to talk to Larry Bird's teammates very often. So, uh, <laughs> what a surprise! Uh, yeah, I know. Shocking. Uh, but I've I've heard Jokic's passing compared to Larry Bird's, mm. and how it kind of it like goes through. It creeps into everyone else on the team, and everyone becomes more un- unselfish. Um, do you agree with that sentiment? Does Jokic have like some of that bird DNA I with him? I don't. I don't see him with the bird DNA. I see him as when Bill Walton was at his best passing as mm. a center, the interior passing that he was able yeah. to make. Larry was as creative as anybody, but Jokic takes it to another level. You know, Larry wasn't necessarily Jokic is bringing the ball up the floor every single time. Larry would do it sometimes. And Jokic controls the initial point of attack offensively. If you come to double him, his vision is extremely good. Uh, Laris was good. But Jokic is that big body on the inside that once he backs you in, there's not too many people in the NBA. And then he throws over the top the Gordon against the Celtics and got a couple of dunks late in the basketball game. So, yeah, he has that. He has a, a vision, but I put it more like uh, I was at the – I would compare that more to Bill Walton when he was in his prime with Portland in 1976 or 77. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first came to the league, they were a machine. You you mm-hmm. get off one of these guys, they get the ball to Walton. He was dipping it off to Dave Twarsick and all these other guys just going in for layups. And so, uh, yeah, I see that bit more vision of that than I do a bird. Well, I genuinely hope that we don't see Jokic at all when it comes to the finals. I hope that one of the other Western That'd juggernauts nice. uh, knock them out. That would be very Why? convenient for, for us. Why? Why? Well, because he puts the fear in my soul, Max. Yeah, He's an extremely scared. good player. If, you, if you're scared, go get you one of those uh, Australian <laughs> kangaroos out there. Man. I might have to just do <laughs> just go that. Get a, go get a couple of dingoes out there. You know, maybe you'll be all right. But I, I, I will find, I'll find some comfort in a kangaroo. You, you, that sounds play, good. you play who you play. And, 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 you know, and what we wanted was the best. Everybody, were we afraid when the Lakers showed up that we were playing the Lakers? No. Those are the things that you, you want that challenge. You want that, you want that Kobe Bryant at his best. That's what creates uh, memorable things. You don't want to uh, run through it. Like the NBA Finals last year, who really remembered that? Anybody remember that Miami played there? I mean, nobody remembered that. Really. I was so, like, no. focused on the Celtics getting there that you just didn't even see it. So I want to see the best play. So now I say, if you want anything, bring on Denver. As much as I don't want want to go to Denver as a person, stand there for <laughs> three or four that days, <laughs> I would like to see them play Denver. Well, look, this mentality of mine is one of many reasons why I'm not a competitive athlete, but we'll leave that there. <laughs> we're, we're almost out of time, Max. I've just got one more question for you. We talked about Brad Stevens and mm-hmm. his greatness as a, as a GM or a president of basketball ops for mm-hmm. the Celtics. I want to ask you about one other former teammate of yours, which is Danny Ainge. Like, mm-hmm. we, obviously, we love Danny Ainge around here. He architected the trades that, that mm-hmm. got the Jays here. He's ultimately responsible mm-hmm. for the Jays. Mm-hmm. 
playing for the Celtics, but what kind of teammate was Danny Ainge, and how does that contrast with his public persona as a as a front office guy? Uh, Danny was fearless. Uh, he was he was calculating. He was uh, cunning. Uh, you know, he uh, he he thought the game uh, in a um, a great way. Uh, early on, I played with Danny. Uh, when Danny's first year, he got to the Celtics, and he was a shell of what he was because Danny couldn't shoot. He, he had a he had a mental block, and it was myself and Kevin McHale. And I took Danny aside one day. I said, Danny, I'm gonna work with you, and you're gonna get a you're gonna get a wide open shot. Your first shot, you're gonna get this wide open when you're in the game with me. I said we went to practice that day. I said, Danny, you pass the ball to me. Your guy's not going to be afraid. He's going to come down and double-team me. And you run to a spot, and I'm going to hit you in the hands, and then you knock down the shot. Man, we must have did that for 30 minutes. Danny was just nailing shots. And Kevin McHale was watching all this. We get in the game. Play happens. Danny passes me the ball. His man double-teams. Danny runs to the corner. I throw Danny the perfect pass. Danny shoots. And hits the damn side of the backboard. <laughs> Kevin McHale goes, yeah, all that damn work you did. Is it. <laughs> but he has changed his, his persona as a, a general manager, as a competitor. He's been true. And he's made some great trades. Uh, you know, he always, he's in the mind of even more like uh, Larry Bird, when he's talking about Larry Bird and Kevin McHale got to be old, older. He said uh, Red Arback had a chance to trade him for uh, – I think it was Perkins, Sam Perkins, and Detlef Shrimp. He could have done that with Dallas. And uh, Red didn't pull the trigger. Danny said, I would have pulled the damn trigger and got both of them out of there. So (laughs) I think that's that's the mentality, and that's a a great picture of Danny Ainge. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to hear that. Uh, Look, Jake, Spoonie, unless you guys got any other questions, I think we'll uh, wrap this one up and, and get out of here. Um, nah, this Cedric has been Maxwell. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. awesome, dude. You're you're a legend. We love we love listening to you and see you, you being around the Celtics still. Well, like man. it's uh, it, it's awesome that the the culture still you know runs through the organization. Well, gentlemen, it was a pleasure talking to you. And like I told Draymond Green a couple of years ago, we <laughs> we had we had a tat a tat going back and forth. I told yeah. him, I said, let me explain something to you, man. There's only been 35 MV- Finals MVPs. <laughs> And then one of them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That yeah. is right. So, that's yeah, a trump that, card. That counts, that's, a, that's a trump card. So anyway, gentlemen, it was a pleasure being with you. Enjoyed it. And uh, and let's get back together later on when the Celtics win this next championship. Hell yeah. Deal. All right. We'll hold you to that, Max. Thanks for taking the time. We're going to leave it there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Subscribe. Hit that like button. Spoonie, Jake, love your work, guys. Until next time, go Celtics. I love the Celtics!